good afternoon all and a hearty welcome to this launch of our monograph on gender issues in Caribbean health. As we start, I just take Ida's pause to invoke the presence of the Almighty with us as he has guided us through these very months and that he will guide us through the function this afternoon. I want to extend a special welcome and thanks to Professor Dale Weber, Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of Mona Campus for taking the time out of his busy schedule to be with us today. We acknowledge the presence of our Faculty of Medical Sciences University Dean and Dean at the Cave Hill Campus, Dr. Peter Adams. We have apologies from our own Dean at Mona, Professor Minerva Zane. Professor Wendell Abel, the head of the Department of Community Health and Psychiatry, within which the Family Medicine Program is housed, will be joining us shortly. I also recognize the presence of Dr. Euclid Morris, coordinator of the Family Medicine Program at the Cave Hill Campus. Dr. William, Pauline Williams-Green, past coordinator of the Family Medicine Program at Mona. And uh, Professor Monica Asnani, Professor of Family Medicine and Epidemiology on the Mona campus. We had received apologies from Dr. Karen Carpenter, Director of the Institute for Gender and Development Studies Mona Unit, but I do see that she might be with us virtually, and I'm glad, and if so, I'm glad, and if not, I welcome other members of her team. I want to make a special word of welcome to Dr. Leith Dunn, who is the past director of the Institute of Gender and Development Studies Mona Unit. It is very true to say that were it not for her vision and perseverance, we would not be standing here today. Also grateful that she has stayed up late because she is now located in Botswana. I know it is very late in the night there. We appreciate her being awake and with us to be part of this, of this function. Welcome members of all the community, students who contributed to the monograph, friends, well wishers all. A, heart, a good afternoon and a hearty welcome to you to this program. It will be my pleasure to through the program this afternoon and we look at some of the work that has been done by our students. This has Dr. Dunn, when I say she has had the vision and she has had the perseverance, that is not an exaggeration. For the 10 years that she has been involved with the teaching for both the Mona and Cave Hill students, each year she has said to us, you know, there, are, there is work here that is worth publishing. And it is really a very gratifying experience to be able to have brought this to fruition. So, Dr. Don, all kudos to you. At this point, I want to invite our Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the Mona Campus, Professor Dale Weber, to bring greetings. Dr. Peter Adams, University Dean, Faculty of Medical Sciences. Professor Abel, Head of the Department of Community Health and Psychiatry. Dr. Leith Dunn, Dr. Eileen Stadard Golson, Dr. Kristen Smith, Dr. Euclid Morris, Dr. Pauline Williams Green. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. I'm delighted to bring greetings on the launch of this. Gender Issues in the Caribbean, Health, Implications for Family Medicine and Public Health Practitioners as an interesting and insightful book. I'm here in my capacity as Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the Mona Campus. And on behalf of the Mona family, I want to thank all who have participated and played a part in making this book a reality. 
all will concede that it is research that makes the practical available to us all. Gender issues in this monograph showcases work done by family medicine residents and the DRP students who pursued the family medicine gender issues module facilitated by Dr. Leith Dunn when she was then the director of gender and development studies here at the Mona unit. The monograph is jointly edited from the Faculty of Medical Sciences here at Mona and at Cave Hill and the Institute for Gender and Development Studies. The idea clearly is amalgamation of a thought process by those who are foremost in their area. The other directors who have all contributed, Dr. Euclid Morris and Dr. Kristen Smith, were later brought on board and clearly added their own touch and ingenuity. The goal was to bridge the knowledge gap and you've done so by editing peer reviewed and published works with some new works and papers to make the vision created as it is now. It's born fruit and you should be proud. The work we celebrate here today is groundbreaking in that it brings together years of rigorously mined data into one volume. As a researcher, you want to find the information and find it where you can. Here, it's all in one place. 30 years of data, and we continue to play our part as leads in researchers for the betterment of our people and our region. Our programs and the research output continue to meet global standards, and this publication and the work that continues will continue to place the University of the West Indies in the top 1.5%. The importance of and the inclusion of scholarly work and gender is paramount to me as principal. The extension that the UWI has by reaching so many persons is part of the success story. On behalf of the university leadership, I'm pleased to support this publication. It's consistent with our AAA strategy in that it's improving access to information as well as access to research. It's aligning industry as well as partners inside and outside the university, and it's demonstrating great agility. It's also taken a major area of health and gender to the fore. It's timely, it's successful, we're grateful for the authors for having put it together. As we move forward, we look forward to continued work and success through the departments to bring this together. I would not like to end without paying special tribute to Dr. Pauline Williams Green, who served the Family Medicine Program as coordinator and lecturer over 20 years. This publication is as much a part of you and your years of service as it is the UWI, both locally and regionally. Your input is invaluable, and for that, we say thank you. Thank you all for continuing to believe, continuing to work, and continuing to dream. We are indeed the light rising from the West. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, and look forward to the rest of the launch. Thank you very much. Principal, always very good to hear from the leadership and to know that we are in some small way contributing to this light that we want to continue to rise from the West. At this point, I would like to acknowledge the presence now of our head of department. As I said, the Family Medicine Program at the Mona campus located within the Department of Community Health and Psychiatry. Certainly any work that we do within the department is guided, encouraged, facilitated by leadership. And we have had a number of leaders over the years. When I started, the head of department was Professor Denise Elmire Shearer, then Professor Afet McCaw being succeeded her. They were, they were both very supportive of the family medicine program. And certainly Professor Wendell Abel, as in his time as head of department, has continued to support and encourage us to grow. So at this time, I'd like to ask Professor Abel to bring greetings.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I join as we acknowledge and celebrate the launch of this book, Gems in the Caribbean, um, Implications for Family Medicine. Principle, I too say it's timely, it's appropriate, it's important. We all know the importance of gender to us in the Caribbean and certainly the wider world. But I'd also like to focus on the family medicine perspective. Family medicine has as a, an area of specialization in medicine an area in which we specialize in the, on, in, in the total health of the individual and the family, and certainly focus on gender perspective. It's timely because increasingly countries are recognizing the importance of gender issues, family health. And um, I'd like to point to a country like Canada where 52% of doctors are actually trained in family medicine. And part of their training is that they're sensitized to gender issues and other social determinants of health. And with a healthcare system, which is so, with 52% of its doctors, family medicine practitioners, able to achieve um, an equitable and more healthcare system in Canada with excellent out health outcomes, as we all know. It is to be noted that many countries in the Caribbean are now recognizing, uh, have, well, certainly we have recognized the significance of primary health care, and the pandemic has certainly underscored that, public health. But increasingly, we're recognizing the importance of family medicine. So, so much so that many countries within the region are now requiring primary care practitioners to have training in family medicine. The government of Jamaica through the has expressed support for doctors in the public health system to be trained in um, family medicine. And to the extent that they have um, recently been collaborating with the university and have been sponsoring doctors to be trained in this area. It's a, an area that we will be able to sustain, we will enter rules, and that we support the government um, as it um, attempts to increase the care of doctors who are trained in family medicine. I therefore I'd want to pause again to applaud the team in family medicine the entire team who've collaborated to make this um, book a reality. The book is certain in recognition of our mandate to disseminate information as a university and as a department to train and to publish. And it is certain that these that make our work relevant as a university in contributing not only to policy, but to practice. And within our context, healthcare, and certainly, as the principal has also alluded to, it is what has also helped us to pivot to the top 1.5% of universities in the world. Again, I'd like to extend my heartiest congratulations to everybody and um, who have collaborated and worked together to make this a reality and have a pleasant afternoon. able, supportive as always, and we do appreciate it. I never miss an opportunity to tell you how much your support and guidance has benefited us over the time we've been head of department. Now, just earlier this week on Monday, the, the vice chancellor had a town hall meeting, and one of the things he spoke about was the need for us to more cross-campus teaching to make use of resources on one campus to teach across campuses and therefore be more cost effective. And this is something that the Family Medicine Program has been doing for over a decade now. 
we recognized the great resource that we had in the Dr. Leith Dunn on the Mona campus and in her whole team. And Cave Hill campus recognized that rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and find someone else, that we would utilize this expertise. And so over the years, Dr. Dunn has been teaching both families and residents at the Mona campus and at Cave Hill campus. Dr. Euclid Morris is a part of the family medicine program at Cave Hill, and I would just invite him at this time and greetings to this meeting. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Standard Golson. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Morris, we are hearing you, and please go. Okay, thanks once again. Uh, Principal of Mona, uh, deans, heads of departments, uh, fellow family medicine lecturers and coordinators, I bid you good afternoon. Um, it is certainly a great pleasure to give a few words on the launch of this, this monologue. And I'll start by giving just a little bit of perspective, the, the gender studies module, which is one of the, the mandatory 12 modules that we do with our 12, uh, our, our diploma program, there are 12 mandatory modules and gender studies is one of them. And I remember when I rejoined the, the department of the faculty back in 2006, uh, then head of department, Peter Adams, who's now dean, we were trying to decide, well, or we, he was more direct in which, which um, modules either of us, because it was myself and him at the time, would be responsible for teaching. And um, having not had any specific uh, formal training in gender studies myself, the one module that I said I, I really couldn't teach was gender studies. Um, and over the years, um, by, if you like, vicarious learning through the residents who've come through the program, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I've certainly come to appreciate the role of gender studies in healthcare practice and indeed family medicine. Um, and if I were to look back in, and say, you know, if there's any area in my undergraduate and postgraduate training, having come through all, you know, through the University of West Indies and, and other places, one area that was perhaps lacking in my teaching was that awareness of gender studies and the impact on health. And so when you look at the monograph, you know, the titles or the subject matter, which has been carefully written, presented, uh, researched by our by our, by our residents, you know, you see topics and titles that you think, well, how could we have practiced medicine uh, 20 years ago without recognizing it? There are topics such as the social cultural impact on women's health, health problems affecting female sex workers, gender and healthy aging, and one very provocative title of one of the chapters is that health degendered is health denied. And what I will say about the program, and I, this is to pick up on the general theme, is that it is indeed timely. Um, and I think any family physician who is, uh, who has gone through a formal postgraduate program would be lacking in a competency if they weren't competent in managing the issues in healthcare that arise from gender. Um, and so I think I agree wholeheartedly that the book is the book is is timely. Um, I would also agree that when it comes to the production of the book, um, and indeed the delivery of the gender module, the gender studies module for the family medicine residents over the healthcare, it is a shining example of the collaboration that I expect 
that I am extremely proud of that it has existed certainly in my tenure as a lecturer here across the, the, the campuses in family medicine. Um, they, they, without any, you know, needing any prompting or any uh, particular uh, 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 set of uh, encouragement from ourselves, whenever, when, when we asked Dr. Dunn to take up the, if our, or if our students could join, and this was before COVID, I mean, COVID actually accentuated it. But before COVID, she, she, to, if she could teach our students at the same time, she never hesitated. It was, you know, without hesitation, said, sure, send them on. Despite the additional work that it would mean in terms of the lectures, in terms of the correcting, in terms of putting grades, she never once grumbled. And I have been extremely, extremely uh, 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 happy or or pleased and proud of the collaboration that 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 that, that demonstrates. Um, and I say this not in just in this forum, but all the time. I'm really, really the family medicine department. Certainly, in my time, um, I think has been, you know, the collaboration with or, or the interaction with my colleagues from the other campuses has been one of the the, you know, one of the most pleasant experiences for me. Of course, there we don't agree on everything, but the way we come up with amicable, uh, mutually agreed solutions, I think really is an example and it is fitting that this that we we leave some record of how our collaboration uh has or what our collaboration has produced over the years so i'm very thankful and grateful to the resident residents across the campuses mona and mona by extension is the cayman islands and uh, bahamas and the CAFO campus that share the work of that that are uh that are tutored or have been tutored by Dr. Dan over the last 10 years. I'm grateful for the work for uh, Dr. Standard Goldson and Kristen Smith and helping to do the editing and a whole lot of the, the heavy lifting and groundwork of putting it all together. Uh, I'm extremely grateful, as I've said, to Dr. Dunn, who whose brain child it was and who um, thought, well, there's a lot of work coming through these years and are we really capturing it? And perhaps that's one of the, the things that we need to correct um, to, to manage the output um, for all the, the clinical work and indeed the research work that we that we do. Um, so I am extremely pleased to be associated with this book launch. I am it, it for me it makes compelling reading um, and certainly is a shining example for the residents, the future residents coming through as to what standards they 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 need to achieve and attain and um a special word for sure about uh dr pauline williams green who predates myself and and the dean and i know her as a perhaps she was an examiner of mine so i've known her as an examiner a teacher a mentor a colleague and indeed a friend uh, and a fellow examiner and she's she, she's championed the cause of uh, family medicine with distinction and is certainly worthy of any commendation and any award that, that, she, that she gets. So it's with great pleasure that I give my little two cents worth on the launch of this book. And I thank all of you for attending. Thank you very much, Dr. Morris. And as you say, one of the great pleasures of, of working within family medicine is really the great cross-campus collaboration that we have. Our colleagues at Cave Hill, St. Augustine, and in the Bahamas, we all work so well. Yes, as Euclid said, there will be times we could never agree on everything. But the way in which we deal with disagreements, the way in which we work together, I think has really been one of my great pleasures over the last 10 years. So we talk about cross-campus collaboration, but then we talk about working across disciplines and involving persons in other disciplines who have particular expertise. 
And certainly when it came to the area of gender issues, there could have been no better person positioned on the Mona campus at that time to help to guide our residents through this gender issues module than Dr. Leith Dunn. And just to say that when you do look at the, get a chance to look at the book, you will see that in addition to family medicine residents, there are students from the doctorate in public health program who also do this module as an elective. And some of their work is also showcased. But at this time, I am going to ask Dr. Lee Dunn to take the mic podium and to give us an overview of the project and how it came to fruition. Please, over to you. Thank you very much, Chair. Good afternoon, colleagues, principal, heads of departments. Um, thank you very much for your kind words. And a special note of thanks to Dr. Pauline Williams Green, who has been part of the architect for this program. Um, this book fulfills several commitments. The first is to the medical doctors and health professionals registered in the program, as you have heard that I've taught for 10 years. Um, I also want to note that it's a fulfillment of my commitment to the principal, and I kept reminding Dr. Standard Golson that I have to produce this deliverable or I'll be in trouble. But the book fills a gap in the literature in the field, and I, it has been inspired by Sir George Elaine's public lecture, Health Degendered is Health Denied, which he delivered on three campuses in 2012 and has been part of the core readings for the course. As you know, Sir Joy is former director of Pan American Health Organization and former chancellor at the university, but he's also a member of the project advisory committee of the CARE IDRC project, improving household um, nutrition and food security in the Caribbean, led by Professor Lapia Samuels, which is also promoting gender in strategies in non-communicable diseases. And I'm thankful to be part of that team. The book supports the UWI gender policy and gender mainstream in Caribbean health. It demonstrates family practitioners' ability to use global, regional, and national human rights commitments to integrate gender perspectives in health policies and programs. The scope of the book, as you have heard, covers a range of gender and health issues. And these are consistent with the UN Sustainable Development Goals that use gender as a cross-cutting issue to achieve all 17 SDGs. They have applied their gender lens to discuss health needs and rights of children, adolescents, persons with disabilities, older women and men, men's health, and key and vulnerable population groups at risk of sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. They have used their research skills to analyze sex disaggregated data in their practices to become better uh, clinicians. This has been a very exciting course and one in which we have mutual learning and sharing on issues such as gender analysis of trends in accident and emergency departments, the characteristics, causes, and consequences of gender-based violence and gaps in the delivery of health services. The COVID pandemic itself offered some new insights for gender mainstreaming. So did gender climate change and disaster risk management and health, as we discussed gender differential health impacts of the volcanic eruption in St. Vincent and the Grenadines last year. Just a brief overview of the book of these 11 peer reviewed articles, a preface by um, um, Dean Peter Adams and an introduction by our co-authors here. The first article, Gender Issues in Health by Chantelle Miller provides a review of Sir George's um, um, paper, Health Degendered is Health Denied and I encourage you all to read it. The second, The Sociocultural Impact of Women's Health by Jodi Ann Smith examines how gender socialization and intersectionality affect gender outcomes and health outcomes for women. The third by Dr. Harewood Marshall examines gender and health among vulnerable population groups. It's entitled Health Problems Affecting Female Sex Workers in Barbados, a Gendered Response to Health Promotion illness prevention and disease management. A fourth by um, PhD candidate Penelope Campbell examines gender and aging and looks at gender and aging in Guyana. 
The fifth by Simone Spence examines the links between gender socialization and non-communicable diseases and vulnerable population groups. It's entitled The Role of Agents of Gender Socialization in Influencing Health-Seeking Behaviors of Males and Females in Jamaica. The sixth by Dr. Andrew Foster is entitled Healthy Gendered is Health Denied, a discussion of Barbados's healthcare. The seventh by Dr. Tina Eiffel is a reflective paper on sexuality, sexual diversity, and HIV risks. And she examines how stereotypical gender roles related to sexuality may influence HIV risk behaviors for both males and females. The eighth by Dr. Nicole Skyers is entitled Agents of Gender Socialization and Their Health-Seeking Behavior. A ninth by Do uh, Dr. Dominique Calderon is entitled The Impact and Role of Gender on the Health-Seeking Behaviors of Sickle Cell Patients in the Cayman Islands. The 10th by Dr. Vanya Sterling Allen is entitled The Challenges Faced by Family Health Practitioners in St. James, Jamaica Due to the COVID-19 Pandemic Agenda Perspective. The 11th and final is by Dr. Martina Williams as it, and is entitled Gender and Family Medicine in the COVID Pandemic. In closing, I just offer my sincere congratulations to the authors. I encourage you to continue integrating gender in your profession, your research, and your publications. Congratulations to the family medicine lecturers and staff. Please continue to publish. There's a gold mine of information in those assignments and lots of books there. Please share the findings at conferences and explore collaboration within and outside the Caribbean. The COVID pandemic has taught us to expand our use of technology and to work across countries, time zones, including here in Southern Africa. My special thanks to the IGDS team, Dr. Carpenter, the new head, Ms. Ingrid Nicely, Senior Administrative Assistant, who has been in the trenches and on this journey over the years. Thanks to the fair peer review team who have been acknowledged before, and also to Ms. Kimberly Carter-Bias, who is one of the first graduates from our BSc program, which continues to grow and expand under the leadership of Dr. Karen Carpenter. Special thanks, my special thanks to Mr. Robert Harris, who has designed books for us at Gender Studies and produced this one and the cover. Your patience and professionalism are extremely and sincerely appreciated. I just want to close in acknowledging and thanking my own family. My husband, Professor Hopeton Dunn, now at the University of Botswana, our daughter, Dr. Jessica Dunn, who's a senior lecturer in applied psychology at Nottingham Trent University, our son, Jamani, who's an assistant registrar at International Admissions, and his new wife, Dr. Therese Janiel Dunn. I want to congratulate and announce the um, PhD of Dr. Cynthia Joan Joseph Spitter of USN, UWI lecturer and midwife, who successfully defended her PhD thesis on gender-based violence screening in antenatal clinics last week. Thank you very much. And it has been a pleasure to be part of this launch. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Don. And I know it's, it must be way past your bedtime. <laughs> and we are very grateful that, 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 that we were able to find a time that you were able to work with. Thank you very much for that overview of the project, which really captured the work that, that, has, that we have done. I don't even remember when we actually finally got made a start but it has been a few years well of work and good to see it come to fruition. Dr. Peter Adams is one of the persons within the cross-campus family medicine group that we are very proud of. You would have heard that he, he was formerly the coordinator of family medicine on the Cave Hill campus and certainly when I came on board in 2010, he was, he was the university examiner for family medicine, and he, he gave a lot of guidance and held my hand for quite a while as I came on new to the academic side, even though I had been working at university for a number of years prior. It, it, 
it really did our hearts well when Dr. Adams was promoted to the position of Dean at the Cave Hill campus. It was a singular recognition for him and all and his work that he has done over the years, but also a singular tribute to family medicine that someone from within our ranks would be recognized. And no, he is not just Dean of the Cayfield campus, but he is now serving as university dean. In that capacity, I now ask him to do the formal launch of the monograph, Dr. Adams. Thank you, Dr. Stanley Wilson, for that introduction. Um, Professor Dale Weber, PVC and Principal, Mona Campus. Professor Wendell Abel, Head of the Department of Community Health and Psychiatry. Um, well, Dr. Aileen Standard Golson, Head of the Department at Mona. Doctor, not Head of the Department, um, Program Coordinator, Family Medicine at Mona. Dr. Euclid Morris, Program Coordinator at Cayville Campus. And Dr. of course, Dr. Lee Dunn, our tutor um, at now in Botswana. It's, it is with great pleasure that I speak this afternoon at the launch of the monograph, Gender Issues in Health, Implications for Family Medicine and Public Health Practitioners. And it, in fact, it's very fitting that we're doing so via video conferencing. Um, Pre-COVID, we may have had an in-person launch, who knows? I'm just gonna go back a little bit in the history of the family medicine program, because to get to a monograph, you've had to start somewhere and it's, it's just not produced overnight. The Family Medicine DM program is now 41 years old, having been launched in 1980 in Jamaica, followed by Cayville in 1981 and 2002 in Nassau. Um, the original four-year DM program was based on the traditional model as it largely consisted of clinical rotations, many of which were completed in a hospital setting. During the intervening years, the traditional residency DM program has undergone tremendous change and expansion. Two significant, cha two significant changes occurred that propelled the program to its current status and indeed laid the foundation which al allowed this monograph being launched today to become a reality. The first was the launch of the Diploma Family Medicine Program at the turn of the century. Yes, I can use that phrase. See, that sounds a long time ago. And second was the start of distance education using, using web conferencing in 2006. Added to this was the early adoption of the one university policy by the family medicine coordinators of all four teaching sites. And we did this long before I, I think the phrase was coined. Um, maybe it was coined then, but before I remember hearing it. So the two significant changes, the launch of the Diploma of Family Medicine in 2000, which occurred at St. Augustine, in 2001 at Mona, it was part of the MSC, and at Cable in 2004. The change was significant for several reasons. It, it cemented the one university approach I mentioned. In 2004, when Barbados launched a diploma, it, it was agreed that all sites would have 12 modules, which was a reduction to what was being used before. But one of the modules we would, would retain and definitely keep was the gender issues and health module. Cavill and Mona used the same module on gender issues that was written by Ms. Jacqueline Stevens and Dr. Pauline Williams-Green, of, of both of Mona. So we are fortunate in that we use the same reading material. Um, and the launch of the diploma saw the introduction of a non-residency model to, to the family medicine program. And without that, you wouldn't have had all these um, diploma students Doing, these doing the gender issues module, and we may not have had the wealth of material to choose for the monograph. Um, the second important change that was needed, I mentioned already, was a distance education using web conferencing had to be used. If we didn't have distance education with web conferencing, uh, Dr. Lee Dunn would not have been able to teach our students of KFL. And she would have had more difficulty reaching all the Mona students who were in a, a, in a much larger island. 
we in KFL purchased Illuminate Live, a live license in 2006. We cost us US $15,000 for 10 seats. So that is 10, allowing 10 people to come on at the time and a three year of maintenance. And we subsequently increased that. Yes, we started video conferencing in 2006. For those of you who have forgotten, this is long before most people spoke to each other on a computer or communicated by WhatsApp on a smartphone. I assume the smartphone in vogue then was an iPhone, but was probably the ex now extinct BlackBerry. And many people may not have owned one. Internet access was by, by dial-up modem and bandwidth was meager. In introduction of web video conferencing was important for several reasons. It allowed us at KFL to expand to true distance education, enrolling students in several Caribbean islands. It definitely increased access. And I think um, this may have been alluded to before, which is a key part of the current U UWI AAA strategic plan. Um, we in KFL were able to expand from three residents to um, a diploma and MSc and DM at probably 18 students. Just imagine what distance education was like before Illuminate. Distant lectures were done by UEDEC. You had to drive to a university site and you had to hope it worked. Um, and you could not remain in office like the physicians doing the gender issue studies and um, do your class. But even more importantly, um, uh, acquiring Illuminate Live allowed us to increase the range of persons teaching for us. And I think this is what Dr. Standard Goldson alluded to before. Um, and Dr. Morris also alluded to my next point. I quickly realized that as good as I was at NCDs, SDIs, and EBM, I was a little out of my depth at gender issues. Um, in August 2009, I emailed H Dr. Hazel Laws at Mona and asked her if she could recommend someone. Um, this was after I had, I had used a couple other persons to help me teach gender, gender issues mod module. My email to Hazel read, as we briefly discussed, I need to get some, some teaching sessions on gender issues for the family medicine diploma range. If there is someone in Jamaica with experience in this subject, we would be happy to have her do the teaching over Illuminate. Perhaps other opportunities will arise for using expertise from Mona. Uh, I was sent two names, one of which was Dr. Dunn's. And Dr. Dunn, I did a lot of research before I emailed you on, in September, 2009. Uh, in September, I emailed you and um, asking you to teach via Illuminate and to mark assignments. And you responded almost immediately, although you apologize for taking a day to do so. I'm keen for us to support the program as we try to mainstream gender in all disciplines. I have not used Illuminate, but I'm willing to learn. So Dr. Dunn, you gave your first lecture on February 24, 2010, starting at 2.30 PM Jamaica time. And this was after getting through the formidable Mona Firewall. Now, Dr. Standard Goldson may remember the Mona Firewall, which is probably still there, it used to block Illuminate on campus. So people check their computers at home, they can do the lectures, and then they came to Mona and they were blocked. Um, I don't recall for certain, but I think the first group of students included students from St. Lucia and Jamaica. And I believe even Dr. Kristen Smith might have been in, in that group. And after the lecture, Leet, you wrote to me, this was an enjoyable class and thanks for inviting me to participate in the process. As requested, here is a PowerPoint and a photo. So I have that photo from you all this time. Best regards and see you next week. Um, so thus began a 10, 11 year journey. Everyone is saying 10 years, but 2010 to 2022, it's 11 years um, and counting collaboration with Dr. Dunn. And indeed, indeed the Mona Family Medicine Program with whom joint classes are held. And I must recall from those days, some of our female predominant diploma class at KFL were a little skeptical, skeptical that they would learn anything from gender issues class. But at last, alas, when they finished the module, they reported how much they learned to me. So that was very indeed impressive. 
and they can show how Dr. Dunn inspired them. And, and I know for Dr. Dunn, it would have been a challenge. It, it, I don't know, um, I kept the, you know, it, you would have had a challenge to, to teach um, medical students on gender issues and health. That may not be an area you looked at in tremendous detail before that time, but it shows how when we accept challenges, um, you know, it can lead to, to great things later on. Um, and so if you don't choose the easy part, par, path, sometimes it, it leads to success later on. Um, here again though, family medicine was, was far ahead of Brescia University, which is now speaking about shared teaching to reduce costs. And um, it would be remiss to me to, uh, not to mention that both the modular diploma and the video conference were necessary for the increased intake of students, the control of costs and revenue generation. The university is now speaking about rev the revenue revolution. And I, I hope the Mona principle is still on. And family medicine, of course, were very, was very interested in that from way back. Yes, yes, principal. Yes, principal, I can see your hand. So um, we've touched all the, the key points. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, this monograph edited by Drs. Leith Dunn, Dr. Aileen Standard Golson, Kristen Smith, and I believe Dr. Euclid Morris, represents the hard work of a decade of family medicine diploma students guided by Dr. Leith, guided by Dr. Leith Dunn. And using a module co-written by Dr. Pauline Williams Green, okay, it is truly a one university effort. I learned years ago that you should research what you teach and teach what you research. In the case of this monograph, the papers are the work of Diploma Family Medicine and doctors of Dr. Public Health students and cover a variety of topics. The monograph will be a resource for future teachers and, and students and I anticipate it will, it will be widely used. And it really sends a, it's, it's, re, it's really a testament to the quality of the students in family medicine and to the guidance provided by Dr. Dunn and also the quality of the monograph produced by Dr. Williams Green. So since I'm the last speaker here, I can declare the monograph launched and thank you. contend with now between the mask and the earrings and the glasses but we are learning to navigate this in the, in, the, in these COVID times thank you very much Dean Adams for those words and for that history lesson and yes I do remember having to drive to UIDIC and hoping that that all the sites could get on and it was quite a production but we have really as they say you've come a long way and the technology now is, is really so much better and our, it is to the benefit of our students. Thanks very much, Dean Adams. I'm now going to call on Dr. Kristen Smith. This, the program just says she's a lecturer in family medicine at the Mona campus, but she is so much more. I will not embarrass her by telling you that she's my right hand and my left hand. Oops, I just did. <laughs> she is my right hand and my left hand and really someone who I, I have watched grow over the years. Dr. Adams mentioned that she would have been one of the students in the early days because at the time when Dr. Smith did her diploma, the, the family medicine program was in in abeyance at Mona campus. And in fact, she was trained through Cave Hill for doing her didactic distant teaching modules from Cave Hill and then her clinical work being accommodated here at Mona. So indeed there is a long history of collaboration between the campuses. So I'm gonna call on Dr. Smith now to do the vote of thanks for this part of the program before we move on to the other very gratifying part of this program. Dr. Smith. 
Afternoon, everyone. I, I hear Dr. Standard Gosen talking, and um, I am one of the newer, newer members of the faculty in family medicine. And I am definitely a testament to the cross-campus collaboration that we do have. I can tell you for a fact, after having interacted with um, colleagues that um, my colleagues in family medicine put the family in family medicine. And you, anytime we're together, we are long lost friends and relatives. So um, I know we, and we, I know we will continue to do so. For this afternoon's proceedings, I am very happy to thank a number of persons. I want to uh, send a deepest appreciation to our principal and pro vice chancellor, Professor Dale Weber, for bringing greetings and for extending his warm words to us here in the section uh, and across the campuses and disciplines because we are not only cross campus, but we are cross discipline as well. I would like to also extend thanks and appreciation to our deans across the campuses. Dean Adams, thank you so much. I, I'm definitely one of the, the products of your teaching from when you used to head the program. And uh, Dean Thame, I think she might be joining us through another forum. Uh, also want to thank our head of department, who as Dr. Stanley Gosen says, has been extremely supportive, along with his predecessors of the, this incarnation of the program. The coordinators across campus, Dr. Euclid Morris in for Cave Hill, and Dr. Aileen Standard Gosen, she might say all of what she's saying about me, but she's spearheading quite a bit of these ventures as, as, and she's extremely humble. So she's always going to say those things. I uh, want to thank persons who have participated across the different platforms, YouTube and Zoom. This monograph, this book that we are speaking about today has quite a bit of history. You would have heard some of it already. I just want to reiterate that the module itself, you know, came into being, uh, a lot of the text and so on was put together by the very person that we are honoring this, this afternoon, Dr. Pauline Williams Green, along with Miss Jacqueline Stevens and Miss Lynette Vassell, but to say, um, I think it would be a gross understatement to say that we're here today because of Dr. Leith Dunn. <laughs> uh, she really drove this project and um, encouraged strong encouragement all along the way um, so that, and I know she's smiling. <laughs> I would get phone calls and and texts and emails and yes, uh, um, yes. So she has been saying it for years. You know, this is on is untapped resource and uh, and because of her, I know that we will be doing. This is the first off, so we we will have more. We will have more um, publications from work that has been done by our hardworking students. So these students that we have had are both from Cave Hill and from Mono, family medicine residents, but they are also um, persons who did the Doctor of Public Health program here at the Mono campus. Each resident is responsible for one of the 11 chapters um, that we have had uh, in the program. So Chantel Miller, Jody K. Smith, Asantia Herewood Marshall, Penelope Campbell, Simone Spence, 
Andrew Foster, Tina Eiffel, Nicola Skyers, Dominique Coderon, Vanya Sterling Allen, and Martina Williams. Also want to thank those persons who would have worked behind the scenes uh, doing, their, the, doing the peer review, Dr. Pansy Hamilton, Mrs. Kimberly Carr Tobias, Mrs. Marisa Brown Bailey, Dr. Jessica Dunn, Dr. Althea Bailey. And I know Dr. Dunn has already mentioned his name, uh, but I also want to extend thanks to Mr. Robert Harris for designing and, and putting the um, design features on the book and guiding, guiding it to this particular um, end. And uh, having had all these persons put this effort into the book, uh, we would have put together today's events. And I definitely want to extend thanks to Dr. Standard Gosen uh, for organizing today's events, our hardworking administrative staff, Mrs. Olga Gordon, Ms. Corona Johnson, and we definitely wouldn't have been able to connect in this way without the assistance of the staff from MITS that are in front of me. <laughs> and I want to thank all of these persons that have joined on the different platforms that we have here today uh, so that you can see that this project has come to fruition. Without you, uh, we definitely wouldn't have had these products here today. And as I say, you can definitely look out for more publications. I know that will make our academia proud. Thank you, everyone. My sincere apologies. I don't know how I forgot that. Uh, the book is, we decided to make it a free resource. So it is not on Amazon, it's, it's not for purchase or sale. Uh, you can feel free to contact us uh, by email, phone, text, and so on, and we will send it off to you as you desire. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Smith. And I see that we, I think we have done very well in terms of, of running on time. This does bring us to the end of the launch of the monograph, Gender Issues in Caribbean Health, Implications for Family Medicine and Public Health Practitioners. Want to thank all of those who took part in the program, those who joined us on YouTube. I do hope that you will be able to, to remain with us for the second part of this afternoon's proceedings, which is a recognition of someone so near and dear to us, Dr. Pauline Williams-Green, who, as you heard, well, as you will hear, has been associated with the Family Medicine Program, I would think, for over 30 years now. And at the end of the last academic year, she indicated that she was, she was asking to be relieved. And with heavy hearts, we said, yes, we know the time has come. Younger ones do have to take up, as I'm about to say myself as well. <laughs> Christian doesn't like when I say that, but it is the truth. The time has come to pass the baton. But we do want to recognize Pauline, and we thought that this would be an ideal, ideal time in which we would um, recognize her. So... We're going to have a, a, just a very brief pause, a little um, video, and then we will go on to that part of the program. So thanks all, and please do stay with us.
Yes, so it's my pleasure to proceed to this part of the program. I've known Pauline, well, it's well over 30 years because I knew Pauline from the time that she was a, a resident. We were both at that time young family medicine graduates looking for to find our way to see how we could really make a difference in this specialty, which was still very young in the Caribbean, well established in North America and the UK and other first world countries at that time, but still we were struggling for recognition within our different island nations. And Pauline has done so much work in, in raising the visibility of family medicine in having it take it right, its rightful place as a specialty in its own right. And we couldn't let her time with us end just like that. I know, I know it is about a, a, a semester has gone, but we, COVID came and we said, boy, we'd like to do something in person. But then that was not going to be possible. We said, this is a great opportunity because you can see some of the work that you pioneered coming to this kind of fruition. And we really just want to thank you for all that you have done for family medicine, not only at Mona campus, but really across, across the UWI gamut. But let me not steal the thunder of the person who is really here going to, to, to give our thanks to you. It was with great pride, I think it was last year, the time goes so quickly, but it was with great pride that we saw the elevation of our colleague, Monica Prasad Asnani, to the level of professorship at the Mona campus. And it, was, it really gave us a good feeling when she was asked what did she want to label her self as that she chose to be called professor of family medicine and epidemiology, making recognition of, the, of her roots in family medicine. And she is one of our shining stars from family medicine, someone who has excelled as an academic person within the university system, someone we are very proud of. And, and I know that she was a student when Dr. Williams Green was in charge of the program. So we could think of nobody better but Professor Monica Aslani to do the citation for Pauline, Dr. Williams Green. Over to you, Monica. Good afternoon. For her determined an exemplary contribution to the development and growth of family medicine in Jamaica and in the wider English speaking Caribbean, the family medicine program recognizes and honors Dr. Pauline Williams Green, family physician, extraordinaire, a mentor and a role model to many. In 1991, the first formal postgraduate training program in family medicine that was established in June 1980 with a grant from the Kellogg Foundation was coming to an end due to a lack of established family medicine posts and no financial support from Caribbean governments. Pauline Williams Green, who had received undergraduate medical training at the Higher Institute of Medical Sciences in Havana, Cuba, was a graduate of this program. She had received her Master's of Science in Family Medicine degree in 1991, and thereafter the Doctor of Medicine degree in 1994 under the tutelage of Dr. Winston Segree. In 1992, a proposal came from the Caribbean College of Family Physicians and the General Practitioners Association of Trinidad and Tobago to begin a two-year diploma a third year leading to the Master of Science and an additional year for the Doctor of Medicine degree in family medicine. Thereafter, 
A workshop to look at the restarting of the program was held in 1997. It involved UWI family medicine personnel from across the region, past students and international consultants and included Pauline Williams Green. These initiatives led to the reimagined program beginning in Trinidad and Tobago in 2000 and in Jamaica in 2001. Pauline Williams Green was the dynamic and visionary coordinator of the program at the Mona campus. Distance education was proposed as an approach to deliver this training to allow residents to continue to earn while studying. This was the first formal program that used this modality of education at Mona. It was led seamlessly by Pauline Williams Green, who thereafter went on to complete the postgraduate diploma in distance education in 2003 and the Masters of Arts in distance education in 2006, thus equipping herself for the task of leading the continued transformation of this family medicine postgraduate program. The new design allowed course modules to be delivered virtually. The distance, te the teaching learning approach emphasized experiential learning and critical analysis. There were 19 graduates from this program. She relinquished the post of program coordinator in 2006 but returned as an adjunct lecturer in 2010 when the program at Mona restarted. Her knowledge and experience were of invaluable help to the new coordinator, Dr. Aileen Standard Olson, as modifications were made to align the program with current needs. In addition to overall guidance, she gave service as a course tutor for two modules, clinical facilitator and research supervisor. She played an integral role in preparing documents submitted to the Ministry of Health, laying the foundation for his support of the training in family medicine as pivotal to the strengthening of the primary healthcare system in Jamaica. She has led the design, organization and delivery of training to candidates preparing for the Caribbean Association of Medical Council examinations. Her passion and unwavering commitment to development of family medicine in the region has had her giving selfless service to key professional organizations locally, regionally, and internationally. She is one of the key founding members of the Caribbean College of Family Medicine, serving as president of the Jamaica chapter from 1996 to 1998, and then regional president from 2006 to 2011. She continues to be a dependable, resourceful, and respected elder statesman of the college and was named a fellow of the college in 2012. She also received in 2012, the Medical Association of Jamaica Award for Outstanding Contribution to family medicine education. She is a past member of the World Organization of Family Doctors, Wonka Education Committee. She's a member of the Association of General Practitioners of Jamaica, the North American Primary Care Research Group, Association for Medical Education in Europe, American Academy of Family Physicians, an international member, the Jamaica Association of Distance and Open Learning, and the Association of Teachers of Family Medicine USA. Through all this, since 1992, she has maintained a thriving holistic private practice in a rural community, the Family Wellness Center in Linstead, Jamaica. She puts here into practice all the principles and attributes of the ideal family physician. In the words of one of her close colleagues and friends, Pauline Williams Green is a total person, warm, infectious, deeply caring, and empathetic. She's a committed family person, a loving and supportive wife and mother, a very capable and successful businesswoman, a bright, intelligent, and strong woman 
who doesn't ever give up despite all challenges and roadblocks that may come in the way of our drive to move family medicine to the heights where it needs to be and achieves all this with grace, humility, and always a smile. Pauline Williams Green, we salute you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Monica. Were, you, were we all together, we will be presenting you with, with, with this plaque, but you, you will get this at, at, at an appropriate time, along with the citation and something to remember us by as well. Thank you so much, Monica. I think you have captured the sentiments that we would all wish to express and so much more. Pauline, I'm going to give you a chance to say a few words. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me speaking from Linstead. Yes. Great. Oh, first of all, you really warmed my heart. I, I want to, first of all, congratulate you all, especially Lise Dunn, of course yourself, Aileen, Kristen, and Euclid. This is such a family. And although I've been away from the family a while, I feel at home. Thank you so much for the book. I am so impressed. You have carried it to another level and it, it's outstanding work. I just want to say it augurs well for the family medicine specialty in the Caribbean, indeed in the world at large. So I'm looking forward to my book. I am certainly hoping to get a copy. Congrats to the hardworking residents, to you, who uh, all the editors who worked with it, Lise, Aileen, Kristen, and you, Fred. So let me say thanks to you all in the family medicine section of the Department of Community Health and Psychiatry. Thank you so much for including me in this very special ceremony. I couldn't, I couldn't think of any other activity that would enhance, you know, really uplift me as much as this. Thank you for the kind words from everyone. It's so great to see um, Peter, the, the Dean, etc. And thanks, of course, to Professor Dale Weber um, for his kind words. Can I just thank my mentors, Drs. Winsome Sibri, Alva Kido, and to my many colleagues who are here, Professor Brendan Bain, Denise Edemar, Cheryl. Can I mention Freddie Hicklin? He inspired me in so many ways. Marvin Reed, too. Affet McCorbin was mentioned. And of course, Peter and Rohan Maharaj. Special mention to my colleagues, Anna Matthews and Anna Brown Morgan. But special thanks to the graduates. And this book highlights how much we learn from them and continue to to share in the teaching learning dynamic. Thank you so much, Professor Monica Aznani. You are, you're a jewel. I don't know how you found all those nice words, but thank you, I really appreciate it. And I feel that it's all well meant. I just, you surrounded me with love. Thanks, and I just want to continue the mantra. I remember your dissertation. Lifelong learning, Monica. And so let's continue. In my medical practice, I try and man and show this. And um, there is no greater stimulus than learning to interacting with, with, with the residents and other learners or patients. They too are learners because we teach them and we learn from them. So I thank God for this experience in the family medicine unit at the Department of Community Health and Psychiatry and the entire University of the West Indies. And it's such a joy to be part of the 1.5% at the top. Thank you so much. And I look forward to coming to collect my citation and the, the plaque and everything else. Thank you, bless you. God bless you. God bless you too, Pauline. It is, it is such a pleasure to see you. We really miss you. And several times we, we say, 
we would call on you. I would say, no, no, no. She has, to, she has worked long and hard. She deserves a break. So, so that is the only reason that you don't see us knocking at your door. So friends, we do thank you all who took time out to join us on the Zoom platform and also those who are watching on YouTube. It has been one of those afternoons which give us the strength to carry on it says that with hard work with perseverance we can achieve we must achieve and as we look to the younger generation to carry on the work we know that we as we have stood on the shoulders of many giants before us that we hope that we have laid a foundation that they will be able to build on and take family medicine in the Caribbean to an even greater height. So just wanna thank you all, wish you all all the best for the rest of the afternoon into the evening and hope that in due course, we will be able to have the kind of gatherings that we were accustomed to in the past, where we could now retire together, share some, some drink, food, a few words, and reminisce even more. But alas, that is not possible, but we will all take our memories and hold them dear to our hearts. So thank you all. And yes, I see Peter has opened his, his camera. If the others could just open the camera, let, those of you who are on Zoom, let everyone see us and, and say goodbye and God's blessing to you all. Have a very good day.